This is a quick video demonstrating the basics behind sleep staging and scoring using Nocturnal. When you are ready to begin analysis, navigate to your library within Nocturnal. Here, you are able to search studies based on name, patient ID, or a tag. Alternatively, you can click on each column to order the columns in ascending or descending order. Once you have found your study, double click on the study name to open. The first page you will see is the recording results tab. This page contains an overview of the most common analysis parameters and the recorded signals. The results page is automatically updated when changes are made to the existing scoring or if the automatic analysis has been run. You are also able to edit the patient information here if it is incorrect or you can select the icon here for recorded properties. On this page you are also able to set your analysis start or lights off marker which is this one here. You are also able to set your analysis stop or your lights on marker, which is this tab here. This is essential as this will define your total sleep time, your analysis period and the period of data that is included in the report. You are also able to block sleep stage on this page. For example, if there was poor EEG quality and you wish to block stage N2, in the period section, which is this period section here, left click, drag and release at the end point, and then either score this as block stage N2 or 1, 3, REM, unknown or wake, or you can score it as invalid data. On this page, you can also change the study status to new, invalid, scored, reviewed, interpreted, or done. It is a good idea to run an auto position analysis prior to sleep staging. This may have already been done for you automatically. If not, you will need to create a position auto analysis to be run at the start of every study. What I am about to show you will apply to any auto analysis you would like to create and run, which will be user specific. Once an analysis protocol has been created, it will be available for use from then onwards. You do not have to create it again for other studies. So under Analysis, under Manage Protocols, select New. Give your protocol a, a name that's unique to yourself. Um, for this one, I'm going to create an auto analysis uh, for positioning and for all DSATs um, above 3% or more and to mark my desaturation artifact. So these are the detectors that are available to you. You can either double click to add detectors or select the detector and click add detector here. You can change the general properties of the detectors. However, they have been set to double ASM rules. Once you are happy, select save and close. The analysis protocol is now available to run over the study. So clicking on analysis, find your unique analysis protocol. You can then see the progress under the analysis console tab at the bottom left of the screen here. So we can see that the position auto analysis has finished and same with the DSAT has finished as well. You can see on the recording results page that we have an updated uh, position trend and also an O2 desaturation trend as well. I will now go through how to create a workspace layout. The workspace menu button is located here and this will allow you to apply different workspace layouts and signal sheets to manage the way you want to see your recordings. The workspace layout includes a selection of signal sheets and signal sheet properties. Nocturnal offers a range of default workspace layouts and signal sheets, which is everything located above this line. You can also set up custom workspace layouts and signal sheets. You can save all your changes to your workspace layout for future use. This means that you can change settings on traces and set up your work environment as you see fit. 
I will now show you how to create a new workspace layout. So click the workspace layout button here, select new workspace layout, and give your layout a unique name. And select OK. You can either choose the default sheets, which are all these ones here, or you can select an empty sheet and start from scratch and add signals to it. I'm going to create two sheets, one which will be my uh, EEG and ECG page, and then another sheet which will contain my respiratory pages. So with my empty sheet, I'm just going to rename it by right clicking and rename sheet. Now this study that I'm working with is a cut down version, so I only have um, limited signals available to me. To find the signals that are available, that have been recorded, on the far right hand side of the screen, select the signals and data tab. So these are the signals that are available to me to add. So I have my EEG, or I can search for the signals up here in the find toolbar. EEG and click on the signals and you can see them appearing on my screen. So you can see that the signals are quite raw here, so I will need to change the unit gains and properties of the signals. To do that, I'll just right click on each signal. I prefer to group signals of the same type. Then right click again, go into properties, change the unit gain to whatever you like change the signal colour. Depending on the signal, I can um, show values or clip the signal, apply and OK. I can also change the size of the signal by hovering over the top of the signal and just clicking and dragging to make it larger. I can also move the order of the signals by holding down with my left mouse button, hold down, drag and move and release. I also need to change the filter presets of this. So right click, filter, filter presets, EEG. So there are predefined filter presets for you, otherwise you can manage your filter presets if you prefer. Uh, under ECG, I can right click on the signal and scale to fit. And once again, right click, properties, and change all my colours. Okay, so I'm happy with that and now I'll create another signal sheet from all my respiratory signals. So add sheet, empty. I'll rename this one by right clicking, rename sheet. Okay, and same process, I'll go over to signals and data and select the signals that I would like to see. So in this case, I want to see my abdominal rip. Um, I also want to see my audio volume in decibel meters. Um, my nasal pressure. my thorax movement and the SpO2. I can then move my order of the signals and I might put in position as well. And you'll notice that I'm on a 30 second time base here. So just in the window, I can change this to five minutes for instance, that looks better. I can then once again right click on the signal uh, from SPO2 to show the values. I can group these signal types. Change colours, change properties, etc. I can then use the fit all scale all button to fit all the signals and scale all the buttons to the size of my screen. Okay. So most people like to have the PSG tab on the top half of the screen and the respiratory tab on the bottom half of the screen. 
Now to do that, I'm just going to click on the left mouse button on this tab, hold down the button, drag the tab to the bottom of the screen until the drop to split indicator is displayed, and then release the tab. I can then move this bottom pane to the correct size, click somewhere in the bottom pane, activate it, and then use my fit all scale all button. I would be hesitant to use the fit all scale all button in the top um, PSG pane, as this will change your uh, gain properties. Okay, I can also add my hypnogram view by selecting view, hypnogram, pressing the plus button to expand it across the top of my screen. And because it's taken up a little bit of my screen, I can move this down a little bit. There we go. Keep in mind I'm using a small laptop here, so everything is a little bit squished. Okay, so you're ready to sleep stage now. The first thing I would do is just to check what your scoring shortcut keys are first. So under Edit, Configuration, Scoring Shortcut Keys. Here you can see what has been assigned or assign new keys. Keep in mind also that the numpad numbers on your lap on your laptop or your computer is different to the numbers that are horizontal across the top of the of the computer. So try not to alternate between the numbers because they will do different actions. Before moving on, if you are happy with your workspace layout, do save it. So clicking on the workspace layout button, hover over your workspace layout name and save that layout. So now this layout is available to you from your drop down list. So when you open up a new study, just select the applicable workspace layout and it will be displayed in the same way. Now to start sleep staging, you do need to activate the page. To activate, there's two ways to do that. You can click on the epoch, which is this area here. You see as I clicked on this epoch, it has highlighted in orange. So it is now activated for sleep staging. Alternatively, I can click on this small hypnogram picture and either start or stop sleep staging, but it must be activated for your shortcut keys to work. So now I'm just going to stage this all as stage two to show you. And you can see that my hypnogram here has now activated. And if I press N1, you can see that's changed here. To start marking events, all you'll need to do is select the signal you would like to mark that event in uh, with the left mouse button, drag the area that you would like to mark and release. I know this is an, an arousal, but we'll just mark it to show you. There's a few ways you can do that. Uh, by highlighting, you can then right click and select score event and select the applicable event. I can also see that I've set my arousal to the letter A on my keyboard. So what I can also do is click with my left mouse button, drag, release at the end of the event and then press A on the keyboard and that will mark an arousal as well. To make things faster and, and easier, I can also activate the, signal, the single click scoring here. So if I press that once, all I need to do is mark my first event. And now I have that available to me for a single click scoring or a stamp. So if I press the left mouse button once, whoops, I can use that as a stamp. Like so. Or I can do a single click, drag, release, single click, drag, release, single click, drag, release. You will notice that it will remember the last event that I have marked, so the event type and also the length of the last event mark. So if I mark this event as a 4.594 second event, my next one will also be that exact same length if I use it as a stamp. So if I mark this as a 3.558 second event, my next event will also be that length. 
This applies to every event in any channel. So now if I move to my nasal pressure signal and I mark my hypopnea, my shortcut key is H for hypopnea, so I'm just going to press that now. I can then activate my single click scoring once again, mark my first event, and now it's available to me for use for single click scoring. If I wanted to change the event, I'll just click on that event. You can see that it's highlighted in orange. I can either press delete on my keyboard or press a different shortcut key, such as O for obstructive apnea in my case. And you can see my next event has now changed to that event type and length. Okay, if you've marked an event, but you can't remember where you've marked it and you wanted to take note of it, up here in the search toolbar, you can search for the event. So if I type in hypopnea, there's my event. I click on it and it will take me to the first hypopnea that I've marked. Another tool is the events list tab here on the far right hand side of the screen. If I type in the event, that will show me all my hypopnea events, the time that I've marked them and the duration. This is also useful if I wanted to change uh, all event types to another event type or change the location. So for instance, if I was uh, meant to be marking these hypopneas in the thoracic rip band signal, I can highlight all those, all those events, right click, change location to, and select the applicable one. So I'm going to choose thorax. Yes, and you can see those events have changed now from nasal pressure into the thorax, or for instance, if I should have marked them as an obstructive apnea, I can do the same thing by highlighting those events, right click, change event to apnea. Yes, and they've now changed. So that concludes the quick guide to sleep staging and scoring with Noxternal. Thank you very much for watching.